yeah, hand like wheel side with the cover off. Clean the plate uh, clearly. Clean off everything off the plate. Draw the the profile of the serpentine belt. Copy the serpentine belt's path so that when we put it all back together you don't have to be concerned with the serpentine belt not being on correctly. So if you clean the plate first you should have no problem putting it back together. Just dismantle plate with using all the screws, take it all off the tensioner and everything to remove the plate. Show the camera better. Down. Okay. Cool. Okay, recording. Check your couplings to make sure they're not too sloppy. If they're sloppy, then you'll have to replace them. Go ahead and take that off, Bob. Okay, that's it. That's it as far as putting a coupling in and out. After coupling plate is off, we're going to take the adjustment arms off to remove the rollers. So we're going to remove the little spring clips on the adjustment arm. Easy to do. Removing, see the C clips. After removing bracket, adjustment bracket to the stationary roller, we need to drive it out using a punch on the other end. And that's how you move the stationary roller. Remember which way your spring washers are. That will remove the number one uh, Number two, I'm sorry, the spring clip, adjustment arm, and the roller. Notice that nice little pulling tool that he's using. Sometimes you need two of those in order to get the bracket or the arm off. We suggest that you take a picture of all this before you start, lay your, and then as you take off the arms, you put them down in the same order that you've taken them off to the picture. That way nothing gets mixed up. Now we're driving out the number two roller. That's all there is to it. In removing the adjustment arm, be careful that you don't twist it coming off or pry it in one direction too much or you'll destroy the small bushing that's inside of it. It must come off easily and straight. We're inspecting the pivoting post for the adjustment arm. We see some wear on it. We're going to put on the adjustment arm and show you what is tolerable as far as the tolerance. If you wiggle it between your thumbs there should be no more than one thirty second movement. If there's more than that, take it off and you should replace the you should replace the small inner liner bushing that is in the adjustment arm in order to get that to be tighter tolerance. The the post also has a mar mark on it and a 
and it's not smooth. We are now using emery cloth, a 300 grit emery cloth to smooth that off. And always remember to put grease on those when you put your adjustment arm back in service. We are now going to assemble the drive block onto the core exchange rollers. Uh, the two spring washers, it's really important that the inside, inside diameter is touching as per the sample. And they're slipped on the block showing. Done. After driving on, you may need to drive on the drive block, uh, but if you can't line it up then use the the wrench to adjust it so, the, to, so you get pin alignment. We've assembled and cleaned the coupling with the loose coupling and the solid coupling to the coupling plate. We've assembled our serpentine belt. Uh, always inspect the belt for flat spots or war parts where the fiber of the internal fiber of the belt is worn. If so, replace the belt. Pick up the couplings and be sure to grease where the roller bearing is going to go. We want that to be a nice slip fit over the bearing. It cannot be a loose sloppy fit. To set spring tension for the rollers, to be able to put this back on, take note of how far the screw is sticking through the nut. It's about one eight to three sixteenths of an inch. Keep going. Run second nut out to the end. Install spring assembly on adjustment arm, making sure that the spring fits into the little slot on the arm. Adjust nut down, put jam nut back on top, be about 1 8 to 3 16 down. Tighten jam nut. We are now assembling the last of the six rollers. Make sure that you've greased the arm, the adjustment arms, where the bearings are going to ride in. You've adjusted those and greased them. And the pivot posts are greased also. Tap the roller, if needed, into the other side. Everything should drive home. Spring and pushing it back out. The spring should be back, giving you back tension so that when you assemble the spring clip and put the spring clip on, there should be tension all back on that spring. Assemble the last for the stationary roller with the screw to lock that in place. And that should finalize the, the six rollers core exchange. We're ready for the uh, coupling plate to go on, but we're going to adjust our drivers, our drive coupling, to be all straight across 
so we won't have any trouble assembling on the, the plate and trying to line up each one independently. We're assembling the drive uh, collars, drive coupling. Also, they're all in order and all is straight in line for, to be lined up. Yep. The line coupler is here in a straight line, so when we put the plate on like this, that these all line up in the same direction. Makes it much easier. When I put this on, I get one portion started first, get a nut on the bottom or the top, whichever is easier, and then you can kind of work with each one individually. Also, make sure you get the belt in the right spot so that you don't get it stuck here. If this belt is down here underneath this, you oh, put it you... on, you're down on the wrong side of this shaft. That should be on that side. Now get the plate started on. It can help to pull the coupler, get it started into the female part of it. Do that with each one at the bottom. Once you get enough of that screw started out at the bottom, put the nut on to hold your plate. Once you have all the couplings just started inside the female part, then the whole thing should slide together. All my screws are sticking out. If it did not go all the way in, you will not see all the thread. With the coupling plate mounted in, please note the path of the serpentine belt uh, we, that we drew on earlier. It becomes very important at this point that you didn't have that uh, configured right. After setting the spring pressure for the rollers, now we can go in and adjust roller pressure. In each one of the gap sets on both sides, you'll want to place one sheet of paper underneath each one of the gap sets, both sides of the same paper that you're going to use for checking your roller pressure. I take about a two inch wide strip of paper that I can roll into the rollers to feel the pressure. Should be a light to medium drag pulling out of the rollers. Turning the knob clockwise is less pressure, counterclockwise is more pressure. Using the hand wheel to turn the rollers, I roll my sheet of paper in there. Then I look for the drag on both sides of the roller. Light to medium drag on all of them. So now I'm going into gap number two. So I want to use the number two adjustment to check pressure. This side's a little looser, so I want to go counterclockwise, give it a little more pressure. Now just a little too much pressure. So clockwise just a little bit until I get a nice even drag on both sides. Setting all your rollers the same way, same tension in all the areas.